So there, there are three aspects. So the purpose of most video conferencing technology is to get as close as possible to the live face-to-face -face conversation. If you think about how us chatting live today differs from being in person, you'll see that we need to compensate for some of the conferencing technology weaknesses, such as hearing in a noisy environment and seeing in low light, maybe reducing the lag in online conversations and looking at a person rather like looking at them in the eye rather than looking off to the side. So when you speak to a, another person in a noisy environment like a concert or a restaurant, you are still able to have a conversation because our ears, oh, let me hide this slide. Our ears do a phenomenal job at isolating only the sounds that we want to hear. Unfortunately, this is not the case for most microphones, especially those that are on your laptop, um, because the effective range of most laptop microphones is four to six inches, and most of them are more on the four inches side. So that is, you need to be at the, the distance of like the edge of the keyboard. Like your face, your mouth needs to be close to the edge of the keyboard in order to be heard well. And so you can imagine that's gonna be a, a real problem. And so that's exactly why so many live streamers, they opt for external microphones. Uh, while most laptop and cell phone mics have an omnidirectional pickup, many uh, shotgun mics, so shotgun mics like this one, will pick up more sound in the direction that they're pointed at, so at the front. Uh, another approach that works for podcasters is to use a high quality mic close to their mouth. And that's what I'm, I'm using here. You can see like this is a large diaphragm microphone. And if you need to move around a lot and that happens, you will want to get something like a wireless headset mic. And so what you see here is an example of a wireless headset mic. It has a, a pack for the sender and it has another pack for the receiver where you're, you're gonna receive the, the audio signal. And the, the purpose of getting that mic closer is to get within those four to six inches away. This is not only going to improve an AI's translation of your voice, but it will also make it sound like you are closer to those on the live stream. Often video conferencing tools will automatically spotlight the person who is speaking the loudest. So the volume of your mic is very important. Now, you can also make parts of the, the softer parts of your voice louder using something known as compression. Now compression, it automatically increases the volume when you are speaking softly, and it decreases the volume when you are louder. So in the past, you needed special equipment to do all of this. Uh, but today, there are some mics like the Shure MV88 that have compression built in. And let me show you what that looks like. OK, first of all, with audio, um, what, one thing that we know is that most microphones, they only work about four inches to six inches away from the actual mic. So if you are not like directly here or like really close, even if you have a laptop, the sound is really not going to be great. So what do we do? So one approach is that people will use a microphone like this one. This is a shotgun microphone. And it has a polar pattern, which just means that the sound comes out straight. Um, it comes out straight from the microphone. And this one has like an active battery. So this is the Rode uh, Video Micro Pro. But there are versions that I've used that don't need batteries as well. And so for, for convenience, that might be one good way to get started. Um, there are other uh, techniques that people use. So, for example, if you do podcasting, let me show you what that looks like. Uh, what I use um, is a podcasting mic. This is an AKG C414. Um, and so it, it, what it is is a large diaphragm um, 
podcasting mic and you'll see underneath what it has is a just a small windscreen and that will block a lot of the uh, a lot of the the sound that you might s hear and one of the key things about these types of podcasting mics is that people can connect them to something called compression and let me show you what that means so uh, how can I make this bigger so you can see so if I take my screen and I just make it a lot bigger uh, what you can see here is it automatically is able to take a certain amount of sound and then boost it so it can take the vocal range so that is the vocal range between uh, 128 hertz all the way up to about 2k um, sometimes it's like you go a little bit higher but really the voice the voice component is mostly in this middle so I just make that higher I make the super high stuff a little bit lower and I make the super low stuff a little bit lower as well but some people if you have a lower voice you ha you're gonna have to adjust this uh, as needed now this normally costs money um, like a lot of money because in order to send this information out here's what you need to do like I need to go from the microphone here, um, and it's connected to a Apogee Duet, right? So that's like an audio interface, as you can see over here, um, which is not easy. And then that's actually connected to my computer, to a separate computer that I do just for audio. And you can imagine, like, come on, like most people, most people are not gonna to go and invest in in something like this. But that's okay because there are microphones like the, the Shure MV88 that already do this for you. So that's one example. Okay, so I hope that made sense. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is just explain um, that often when you have a face-to-face -face conversation, uh, you show that you are fully engaged with the other person also when you look them directly in the eye. And when you look away, it, it seems like we're focused on something or someone else. So as much as possible, you want to be looking in the middle of the camera lens. Uh, and this can be as simple as putting your video in a small window um, that, that is at the top of your laptop screen, close to where your camera is. And this forces you to look up in order to see yourself. Um, there is a more advanced technique of having a camera behind a teleprompter. And then this way, you'll be looking directly into the lens uh, when you're speaking. Now, I've got a, a small monitor um, that I use to show the, the people that I'm speaking to. Uh, and so it's as close to having a face-to-face -face conversation as possible. And so let me... Um, open up another video, and I just want to show you what that looks like, just so that it's more clear of how do I get eye contact with a teleprompter. So I'm going to show you how I, I do a lot of my scripts. So I use an app called Prompt Smart Pro on the teleprompter, and I just put my, my phone, like you literally see, like this is just my phone, it doesn't appear in the camera. And if I say congratulations for investing in creativity today with us on AI Parenting Live. We are a judgment-free community moving from screen time to quality time. Our motto is don't sedate, relate to create. And today's theme is all about creating with tech tips to be confident when you are live online. So the next is the rods and the cones of the human eye give us this incredible ability to see both the bright sky and the details of shadows from clouds at the same time. It's estimated that the human eye has the dynamic range of 24 f-stops, which is almost double that of the best DSLR camera that you can buy on the market. Uh, in practice, most laptop web cameras or selfie cameras have about one quarter to one eighth the dynamic range of our eyes. And this means that they have a really hard time making your face easy to see when the wall behind you is white uh, and it's so bright compared to your face. And so there are two ways to get around this issue. The first is to use a camera with more dynamic range. 
but this can cost thousands of dollars. The cheaper method is to be close to a window or to get a ring light close to your face or a webcam that includes a ring light. Uh, this has the added benefit of making you the brightest thing in the picture. And this is good because we are wired to look at the brightest spots. And that's also why if you look behind me, I've painted the walls of my room a darker color. Um, but that said, like the eyes do wander. So make sure you have things on the walls that you want others to look at. So maybe I will at this time show you what does that look like? What does like lighting look like? Now you can use a ring light, but another approach that you can also use is a box light. And I am a huge fan of these soft boxes. Um, and I'll show you why, because as somebody who wears glasses, um, if I, come on. Yeah, okay. So as somebody who wears glasses, if you are too close to a ring light, do you see how like there's a ring? You can see like a ring uh, reflection off of my glasses. That is what happens uh, when you're like really close to a ring light. You will see the ring. Um, and so if you have a soft box, for example, it makes everything brighter, right? But it doesn't create like a, like a box, you know? It, it's just a softer light. So it just diffuses the light in a really significant way. And so you'll see many live streamers, they will use soft boxes because soft boxes is really the next level uh, for lighting. It gives you a much cleaner look without the kind of weird reflection in your glasses. Um, so whatever light you can do, like, I mean, if you can find a lamp or something in your house, that's going to make a huge difference for your lighting setup. When it comes to which camera to get, think of each pixel on the, the camera sensor, uh, like a bucket, and it's there to hold light. And so the larger the sensor, the larger the, the bucket that you have to hold light. Uh, and it also means that you're going to get more dynamic range, you're going to get a little bit more uh, image quality, especially when it comes to low light situations. Now, most phone cameras, um, and not just phone cameras, but let's say like snap filters or even like Zoom, they use AI to improve image quality. This means that the speed of your computer is going to have an impact on the quality of your image when you're live.